So first off, I just wanted to point out, make the observation that when you have uh, the case when lambda is equal to zero, then uh, Lagrange's equations just give you back the, uh, or Lagrange's method, let's say, um, <clears throat> becomes the first derivative test, right? So this means that what we do when we uh, follow the method of Lagrange multipliers is actually a generalization of, of the first derivative test. Okay, so that's not actually, I mean, particularly helpful. It's sort of interesting, but it's not really helpful for actually like solving a problem. Other than to note that um, it's, it is sort of important that we write uh, gradient of f is equal to lambda times the gradient of g and not put the lambda on the, the other side. So, um, but okay, so leaving that aside, um, this clip is all about uh, giving some tips and guidance to people who come across the system of equations and are thinking, oh my God, how do I go about solving something like this? Because in general, there's no like three-step method. You do this, you do that, you do that, and then you win. Um, it's a little bit messier than, than that. So, so let's talk about um, working uh, with the system grad f equals lambda grad g g fixed equal to c okay so um first off i wanted to go back to something that i was talking about in the last clip where we looked at that example with the parabola and it is frequently necessary to divide by oops one of your variables, right? Uh, when, when you're solving these systems. But um, but this may, you may not be able to do this, right? Because like, what, what if you have um, a, a critical point or, or a, a point of interest where one of your variables is equal to zero? right if, if you then you can't divide by zero right and and if you attempt to do that while solving the system you'll lose a solution and, and I just gave an example of that in the uh, uh, the previous clip there 14.8.5 okay so what do you do instead well um, <clears throat> one thing that you can do is you can often um, check that that variable is not equal to zero. And I'm calling it X here for simplicity, but of course, whatever, it could be Y, it could be Z. So um, there's different ways to do this. One of these is that if um, X is a positive quantity, right? So uh, like we saw for the one where we were looking at the length of a box, Right, the if, if one of the dimensions, you're not going to have a, a box with a width of zero or something like that. So then you can assume that it's not zero, and and you know you won't get into trouble because that would just give you a nonsense solution that's not helpful for solving the problem, anyways. Um, another thing that comes up sometimes is um, you might be able to use the constraint. Right, so <clears throat> as we saw in, in the example of the box, it was supposed to have, uh, or the bin rather, it was supposed to have the volume equal to four. So if the volume is equal to four, then there's no way that X can equal zero, right? It's, it's not gonna happen. And sometimes you'll see other things, like maybe you have a constraint like, uh, or one of your equations that pops out from uh, Lagrange's method looks like two times x minus two equals two times lambda x, right? So in this case as well, x cannot equal zero. Do you see why? 
Yeah, if x were equal to zero, then this whole side would equal zero. Uh, and then this side over here would equal um, minus four and you'd end up with minus four equals zero and, and that can't happen, yeah? So it would violate one of your uh, equations. Um, what else can you do? Well, if you can't guarantee that x is not equal to zero, then you can kind of rule it out. So in other words, we work by cases. So what you do is first you check to see if there's a solution when x is equal to zero. So you say, okay, so suppose x is equal to zero, right? And then you can check to see if, if, if you get anything from this. Okay, and so um, if it does give you some points to check, then okay, fine, you check those points. If it doesn't give you any solutions, then okay, that's just as good as well. Either way, once you're done with the assumption that x is equal to zero, you've ruled out that possibility. And so now you can, you can safely um, assume that it's not zero. Right, so like, I mean, what I'm doing is I'm using actually what's called the law of the excluded middle. So there's like possibilities out there in the world, right? So like, what is the case? Here's all the possibilities in the world, right? Okay, well, we divide the world into the stuff where x is equal to zero and where it's not equal to zero. And then first we investigate this side and we get all the solutions that we can. Then we investigate this side and we find all the other solutions that we can. And then since it has to be the case that one of those is true, we've now checked all possible situations and scenarios. So this means that after you've checked that x, um, the, for solutions when x equals zero, you have um, ruled out any of those um, uh, possibilities. So, so you're safe. So in particular, um, you can divide by it. Oops. So, uh, oh, I messed up my word order here. So you can divide by it. 